Hello and welcome to the love class session. Today we're going to be talking about spiritual dating and I'm excited because I have my wonderful husband with me during this class. Um, I wanted him to be here to share a male's view and a male's perspective when it comes to dating um, and, and just the topic of spiritual dating. So let's get right into it. Um, First of all, people would want to know, like, what is spiritual dating? What does it mean? And um, where does it come from? Um, first of all, it's in my book, When God Sent My Husband, which is us on the cover. And um, it's Wisdoms for Capturing and Keeping a Man's Heart. That's the title of the book. And in the book, I talk about spiritual dating because spiritual dating is very important would you say mm -hmm. it's it's basically all about keeping god in the center of of that relationship right right so really why is spiritual dating important or i would say spiritual marriage as well um what would you say why is it important first and foremost well i say it's important to keep god in your uh, relationship have him as the center of your relationship, and he being core and, and who you are and the type of relationship you're trying to build. Right. I think it's so important that people connect with God and they connect with um, just who he created them to be in the essence of who they are spiritually. Because a lot of times when we get to dating or even in, in any relationship, we often look at the outer appearance, the physical, right? When you say, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's natural for you to look at the way a person looks for a man to be attracted to a woman or a woman to be attracted to a man. But when it comes to spiritual dating, you have to go, would you say you have to go beyond that? Yeah, I mean... When you get in a, a relationship, I, I think initially your mindset needs to be in a place where um, you're trying to be in tune with what God has for you in the first place. Um, because sometimes it may not be a situation where you can try to connect something to be what God intended for you. You have to already be in the mindset of doing what God called you to do in mm -hmm. order to walk into the blessings that God is laying out uh, for you in, in, at the beginning. And you know what? I'm glad you said that because it reminds me of something you said a couple of days ago. We were talking about, um, we were just going over our relationship. And remember, I asked you to give me one word that described who I was before we were dating or how you saw me. Mm -hmm. And could you share with them what that was and what led you to say that? Determined, yeah. <laughs> I knew I used uh, determined. I was, I was trying to remember in which one did I say that. So what did what did that mean? What made well, you I say said that? you were determined because when we met, you were you were already confident in who you were, and you knew what you were um, interested in. You knew what you liked. You knew what you didn't like, and you knew what you were aspiring to accomplish. And you was working hard to do that. You was really determined to bring about the the results that mm -hmm. you expected for your life. You know, what you wanted to accomplish, you was very focused and you was very determined. You wasn't looking at what other people was doing, trying to, uh, you know, fit in. Figure or things figure out. Figure things out. You know, you wasn't in a place where you was trying to figure things out and who you mm -hmm. were. You, you knew who you were. You knew what you wanted. And you was determined on accomplishing the goals that you wanted to accomplish for your life. So... That was the reason why I said that you were determined when I met you before we were dating because you knew who you were. Mm -hmm. You knew what you wanted and you was determined to accomplish those goals. And it wasn't necessarily to me, it wasn't all about relationships. Uh, it was more so, you know, in our friendship, you knew what you were looking for, what type of relationship you desired. Mm -hmm. uh, but it wasn't something that you was uh, fully pursuing uh, right. because there was other things that you was trying to accomplish in the, in the, in the meantime too. So. And I think that's so important that other women, especially women who who are seeking a relationship and seeking to find that one or Mr. Right or be married, I think it's so important that they get to that place where 
they're not just seeking that man or seeking that relationship. They are confident in who they are. They know what they want. They're ambitious. They achieving goals and they're they're right. determined. Yeah, they're determined to do what they aspire to accomplish. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And and the fact that a man sees that and see that as being attractive. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good thing. When you know who you are, that's a good thing. And 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 really and it goes back to our to our topic, spiritual dating, because it was something that happened in me spiritually for me to get to that place where it was like I was loving myself, loving God, my creator. I was connected more to him and more willing to follow the will that God had for my life versus me trying to figure things out and do it myself. Mm -hmm. And I knew where God was taking me. So it was like, I wasn't pursuing, you know, being with a, a man or being in a relationship or needy. I had gotten out of that stage because I was once there. Mm -hmm. But the fact that I was, I was now in this place, you know, when, when we first got together and met, where I was more focused on doing what I needed to do. Right. And so that that was something that you said stood out. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm and, and really in that, I would say when it comes to spiritual dating, the first and foremost, you want to make sure that you're good spiritually within yourself. Right. That that you have this strong relationship with God, that you have this connection, that you know where you're going. Yeah, and you're no in confusion. tune with the Holy Spirit. So that you don't be misled to pursuing something that you feel, you know, may be for you, but it may not be the right timing or it may not be right for you. Right. Exactly. Exactly. So I want to get in the book really quick because I think it's very important that when you're dating, um, it's important that you guard your heart. And as you're dating with God in a center, as you're focused on um, dating from a spiritual level, you want to make sure that you, you, you guard your heart and you're preparing yourself. So in the book, and this is um, chapter, this chapter three in the book, it talks about guarding your heart to guard to guard your heart or too guarded to get hurt. This is the, the um, subtitle, too guarded to get hurt. And, and really in the book, I was talking about being in different relationships and dating, but being in a position, this is before you came along, but right. being in a position where it was like, I was too guarded to allow myself to get hurt because I was hurt before. And here's the key. So this is what it says in the book. When you're involved in the dating world and there's no purpose and direction, you can easily fall into dysfunctional situations. You may question, how did I get here? How did I end up in a relationship with a man who is a habitual cheater? How did I become a jealous, insecure woman who despised other women? I don't even know. And Really, I was talking. I was talking about being in in this relationship with this guy who was cheating, and you know, had different relationships and all of that. And here, I got into this position where I start comparing myself to the woman. Like, well, what does she have that I don't have? And that made me become even more insecure, and and you know, just not confident within myself. And I talk about in the book how you guard yourself and you guard your heart by protecting yourself to not become emotionally and physically involved with someone who's not your husband. And I, I just think it's important because I hear a lot of people say, well, you know, don't have sex until you're married, which is very important, which is what we practice. Um, and but at the same time, you need to protect yourself emotionally. Right. Because you can get to a place where, okay, I'm not having sex with this person, but emotionally you're involved and, and there's a stronghold, you know, as far as just the spiritual thing where there is hard to break from this person because you fill your mind and your time with thinking about them, right. daydreaming about them, all of that. Mm -hmm. And this is the reason why a lot of times you, you hear a lot of women who get into relationships and it's like they're they move faster than the men 
So could you explain how men see it the other way around when it comes to dating and emotional involvement and how it's a lot of times men aren't as emotionally involved as women as quickly? Um explain it in from a male's perspective in regards to just being involved emotionally i think i mean it takes time uh to develop that emotional connection i mean i think it's it's a process because uh, man does look at the outward appearance right. uh, and he's looking at a lot of things and i know i, I speak for myself at least mm -hmm. you know it could be moments where i'm looking at things that's, that's just that's just visible you know mm -hmm. that's just out here you know i'm not necessarily um uh visualizing all of the things that take place uh years down the line you know it's sometimes where i mean you know you get in a, a relationship and you think you know my ultimate goal is to be married my ultimate goal is to settle down and have a family but you know that you know you know you want that but the timeline in which you may desire to yeah. have that could be completely different yeah, than what so the timeline so is a woman a right a woman is looking at like okay i see myself married next year <laughs> and a man is like i see us getting married but maybe five ten years down the yeah, line further down the line and so he's moving a lot slow at a slower pace and she's like you know come yeah. on let's move on but what would you say what would it what would cause a man to change his heart towards that to be willing to move faster at her pace and and commit and marry you know um i think it's it's uh it's not about just uh the man changing to move at her pace i think there needs to be um good communication so that they're moving at the same pace mm -hmm. you know i don't think that it'll be it's one way or the other I think that when you connect it with each other, um, you know, your pace adjusts. Everybody's pace adjusts. You and know? this is that's why it's important to be with the right person. Right, right. Because if you're with the right person, you can communicate with them and you all can get properly aligned with each other so that nobody is, is going at a rate or a speed much faster and, than and what that's the other also person important. Expects. And that's also important to be equally yoked, to be spiritually connected, would right, you say? Right. Yeah. And it's important to be equal, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You know, you two people can't walk together unless they agree. So, mm -hmm. I mean, it's difficult for you to um, really accomplish things you want to accomplish at the rate that you would like to accomplish them together if you're not in agreement, if you're not mm -hmm. equally yoked, and if you both aren't seeking God for direction for your relationship. Mm -hmm. And and I agree. I think I think that's what it is i think a lot of times you know people attract they're attracted to each other physically but there's no spiritual attraction on a spiritual level they're disconnected they're they're going in different ways and they have a different um purpose and view and mission and and but but they like the way each other look or they like the way you know, this person live their life or have this car or have this job or this house or something, or they feel like they can picture this person in their future, but they're not going in and they're not looking at the spirit. They're not digging a little deeper. You know, they, they I mean, I mean, it's surface, surface stuff. Surface, know? right. They, they still on the surface. You're scratching the surface. I mean, and realistically, it takes time to get to know somebody. You know, even in our relationship, we've been together for almost 13 years. We've been married and, and, and you know, it's a renewing of knowing you mm -hmm. and getting to know you. I'm continuing to get to know you. I will be getting to know you until we die. I, I would never just know and know everything about you. It's, it's mm -hmm. something that you have to really seek after and really inquire about. And you can't get complacent and you can't get too settled. You know, you have to be in a place where you're you're continuing to seek and you're continuing mm -hmm. to learn, you know, in the same way that this relationship should be a reflection of how we have a relationship with God, mm -hmm. where we don't always know everything. We can't go to a Bible school and get to know everything about God. Mm -hmm. We have to continue to seek him, mm -hmm. continue to inquire of him, to continue to learn from him. And that's what we need to do in relationships. We need to continue to seek each other.
right. continue to inquire of each other to get to know each other deeper. So this is good. How does the flesh interrupt that seeking and knowing on the spiritual level? How do how do a lot of times relationships and dating, how do we allow the physical to get in the way of that? Well, I think people allow the physical to get in the way of that by just um, being steadfast and seeing things the way that they are and mm -hmm. not realizing that though we may see these things, this is only part. Mm -hmm. This is only a part of how things actually are and only a part of how we are. Right. You know, or if, if your relationship is, if, if someone is in a relationship and it's built upon, you know, the sex, if that's the foundation of that relationship, if that's, how you know you connect and 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 there's no true deep intimate conversation and and knowing like i remember you know we would i remember when we were dating before we were married there were times when we would spend hours just talking right. you know just up all night just talking just talking just talking and just how you know there are people who don't even talk to each other or don't even like each other right. Or, you know, they have to figure out things and what to say or, you know, this awkward moments, awkward silence. And, you know, and then they fill their relationship with the physical, where right. it's always about, you know, sex and the body and all of this. When it's like everyone know beauty phase, we're not going to all look like this when we're 90, 100 years old. So what I more can you offer? You <laughs> right. You know. What more can we offer to each other than just the flesh? Right. So I mean, I think it gets in the way of the spiritual dating. Like that's why it's important. And that's why it's a good idea to abstain from sex before marriage, because you really can get to know this person and you can have something special with them when you are married. And we know people aren't all going to do that and stick to it, but really it's helpful. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it puts you in a place where you, you get to know somebody on a deeper level than just, you know, physical and surface, you know, because mm -hmm. even having a sexual relationship, that's only temporary. Mm -hmm. You know, that doesn't tell you anything else about this person after that moment. Mm -hmm. Once that moment is over, then what? Yeah. You know, and it's just a moment. And it's a moment. It's a moment. You know, but to have a connection with the person it extends beyond just that that intimate moment mm -hmm. that intimate physical moment where you can take it from uh if you just take out that physical moment and getting to know somebody you can know them a little bit more intimately right. uh by their mind and you the can way really know what you're getting into yeah and their their overall philosophy in life and how they mm -hmm. live their life and what they aspire to do and and, and some of the things you know it, it helps you to better evaluate um, how equally yoked you all truly are, mm -hmm. you know, because a sexual relationship won't tell you that. Mm -hmm. It won't tell you how ambitious a person is. It won't tell you the moral fabric of the person. It doesn't tell you those things. It doesn't mm -hmm. tell you a person's values, you know, mm -hmm. and those are things you want to get to know, especially if you plan on building a family. You want to build it on some principles and, and biblical foundations and, mm -hmm. and things that will help your family to be successful. Mm -hmm. And you don't want to wake up from that moment and realize that the foundation of your morals isn't right, right. or the foundation of your work ethic isn't right or any of those type of things, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's important to take that time out to get to know the, the individuals on a more deeper level than just the physical. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's really, really good. Um. I want to talk really quick about the healing, healing and getting over a breakup. There are a lot of people who are dealing with some spiritual bondage and they they want more. They, they want a better relationship, but they had a hard past and they they're you know, they, their heart has been broken and all of this. I'm letting you do a lot of the talking because they usually hear from me. <laughs> they hear a lot from me. But I want to. Um, 
let this video kind of open up more on a male's perspective and hear from you. Yeah, this is Patrick's and I, perspective. Pers Patrick's perspective. Well, you're a man, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not speaking so, for everybody. But you, right, you're not <laughs> speaking for everyone, but it's good for women to hear from a man as well. So when it comes to healing and heartbreak, because a lot of times women, you get into these relationships, you still haven't gotten over the last guy. And it's like, moving on to the next and really there you know you have a fragile heart you're broken you're hurt you're upset angry resentful all of that and you go into this relationship and and don't realize because we're not they're not thinking about spiritual dating and the spiritual part of dating and, and being in a relationship but spiritually you're carrying a lot of junk with you and just how toxic it can be because a lot of times you can attract the same type of guy into your life because you have not healed and gotten yourself right. And then many of times if you find a good man, you can bring that baggage on to him. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> and a lot of times I hear other men say this um, too, that, you know, well, we don't have, I don't have to deal with that. You know, she better get her act together because I don't have to deal with that. Why do men say that? A lot of men say stuff like, you know, like I ain't got to deal with that. Right, I ain't got to deal with that. Like when it comes to women who are, you know, they have all this baggage and and they just like, okay, move on. No, uh, well, I think, <laughs> I think from a man's perspective, um, there are plenty of fish in the sea <laughs> for a man. In his mind, there's plenty of fish. In a woman, in a lot of women's mind, it's not many good men. Mm -hmm. You know, so when you come across certain certain guys, you know, who who and especially when they're in their careers already, they have some things established for themselves. They kind of look at it like, you know, I don't really have to deal with drama. I'm a good guy. I got a lot going for myself. You know, any other individual would be in a good place if they was in a relationship with me. Right. And I don't necessarily have to go through the drama of helping somebody figure things yeah. out that don't have it yeah. together yet yeah. or they don't know yet or i don't have the patience mm -hmm. to do that you know yeah well that's something to shine light on because i think you can run a good man away you know isn't that possible, I mean, that's I mean, possible. He, he could be a good man you know that's just someone with potential um you know um but you know having baggage and 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 bringing unnecessary issues up, um, especially early on in a relationship, early on in interaction with the individual, you know, before they really get a chance to know you a little more deeper mm -hmm. than just, um, I just met you and now I know your issues, mm -hmm. you know, um, that is a, that you might push that person away, mm -hmm. you know, because they didn't get a chance to get to know you. Right. They didn't get a chance to understand you a little better. They kind of, they hear, they see mm -hmm. you, maybe attractive, but mm -hmm. if you have a lot of issues, I mean, mm -hmm. those guys that figure that they got a lot going on, they got their career going, they get, you know, they established, they, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, oh yeah, well, she got too much going on. Maybe I let mm -hmm. her figure those things out first mm -hmm. and uh, we can just go our separate ways, mm -hmm. you know, so. You know what, it makes me think about, um, just in the book just how i talk about like all the different relationships and you know the different you know guys that i dated before god sent my husband mm -hmm. <laughs> all the different guys i dealt with you were the only one that was willing to wait that was willing to honor my vow to not have sex before marriage and to me, I, I was, I remember just being in a place because after that, that last boyfriend and I really thought he was just something special. And he told me, you know, Mr. Man of God, <laughs> right. Yes. He told me, God told him I was going to be his wife and he loved me and this and that. And he had my head in the clouds and, and then you know, he just got to a point where he was just like, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to wait anymore. I'm not going to wait on you. You're not willing to have sex with me. 
I just, we just, basically he broke up with me. And I think he was like the first guy that ever broke up with me. So that was just like devastating. Like, no, you didn't break up with me. And on top of that, now you saying you can't wait. You said you were waiting. You said I was, you was going to marry me and this and that. And it was just like, I was just devastated at that point. And in the book, y'all got to get the book because y'all, I, I don't want to <laughs> tell the whole thing. <laughs> but really, the fact that when you came along, it was just so different. It was a, a, a breath of fresh air. It was just like, wow, here's someone who's willing to really be a committed friend and and wait and all that because you wasn't a virgin. All right. So it wasn't like you had never, you know, experienced that or whatever. And the fact that you were willing to wait with me and go through whatever it was going to take. Tell me what was it for you to, you know, be in that position? Because you have some women out here that think, that's impossible and ain't no man going to be willing to do this and all of that. Um, could you share more? About um, that? I think for me, I was in a place where uh, I wanted to do things the right way. Uh, I wanted to, uh, I was trying to uh, give my life right and, and, and do things the right way according to um, trying to live, a, uh, trying to be pure and, and you and wasn't like, like this holy no, Christian guy <laughs> at the time. You was not. No, not at the time. Yeah. But it was just something about just doing things the right way. Uh, because even, you know, we all are made uh, with the moral fabric. God made us all the same. Mm -hmm. And we all know right from wrong. And mm -hmm. I think a lot of times if we put ourselves, uh, if we have experiences that we see and partake in, that distorts how things should actually be it creates those things in our minds to be normal mm -hmm. you know but i think i looked at things uh from the perspective of though i had seen a lot that wasn't right uh, a lot of people that didn't do right i wanted to be that exception mm -hmm. i wanted to do what was right and being willing to wait uh was a part of that being willing to get to know you as a friend was a part of that and being able to grow with you um, in our relationship as we got to know each other. And then, you know, I started going to church and, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and all of that. Just uh, being willing to go through the process to do things the right way initially. Mm -hmm. you know? And I'm tell you, ladies, I'm going to tell you, you don't have to force anything. You don't have to force a man to be there with you, to come to church and get your life right and do this and do that. Like, it was none of that. It was no forcing. It was no controlling. Like, come, you going to do this and you going to wait. It was none of that. It was just, I I was connected with God and I and I knew what I wanted. And and it's like you chasing the Lord and you know what you want. And this man come along and he see what you're doing. And he's like, I'm going to jump on board with you. And he start coming to church and doing, you know, and taking his time out with me and, and pursuing me it wasn't nothing that i had to do i didn't have to chase you down or find you it really is he that finds a wife finds a good thing i really do believe that god gives that to the man you know yeah. and it wasn't one of them situations where you know i'm I'm doing this just to be uh impressionable you know so i'm gonna do this and i don't want to because i'm just trying right right you know but there's a sense of uh the tug of god Mm -hmm. uh, calling me and leading me in that direction. You know, I can't say that all of it was just, you know, oh, I'm going to do this. Well, I'm going to do that. And right. it just so happened to right. be right. right. You know, but uh, and I know that's, that. And that's why the book is called When God <laughs> Sent My Husband. Because you know, it was a God thing. And it was a, it was a tug really in was. my heart to, to, to be led to do things in the right way. You know, and I allowed uh, God's spirit to lead me in that way you know though i wasn't perfect though i didn't have a perfect background you know i was willing to allow god to lead me in that direction mm -hmm. and not fight against it to do what i thought was popular mm -hmm. or what would have been cool or what would have been ex even acceptable what would have right. been acceptable right. uh but i you know yielded a little bit more to be led by god's holy spirit mm -hmm. in order to be drawn closer to him one mm -hmm. and then uh 
as a result, you and I became mm-hmm. close. Awesome. Well, I am, I could go on and on and on about this topic, spiritual dating, and we said we weren't going to go that long. Right. <laughs> so we're going to wrap it up. Um, first and foremost, I want to say if you are in a relationship or you're seeking a relationship, allow God to be in the center of that process. Even if you are married, God is in the center of our marriage. If we're going through something, if we have an altercation, disagreement, we've been married for almost 13 years. We've been through a lot of ups and downs and Mm -hmm. all of that. And we have had to go to God and pray in the middle of a lot of the things that we dealt with and seek after his will. And you have to put him in in all of your relationships, really. Mm -hmm. So I encourage you to um consider spiritual dating consider putting god in the center of of your relationships and really heal your broken hearts and and not bring on all that baggage that can destroy a good thing yeah take take your your burdens and your hurts take them all to god in prayer and allow him to heal yeah. you mm-hmm. as opposed to seeking another relationship to fill a void that only god can fill Yes. Allow God to fill that void and allow God to um, heal that brokenness in your heart yes. as opposed to seeking another relationship prior to being healed. Yes, very important. And that's really our assignment for this week. I want you to write down something that you are going to work on the healing process, something that whether it's forgiveness, um, something that happened to you, you're still bitter over I want you to journal about it. Just write about it and write um, a prayer out asking God to heal that place in your heart. Um, so that's our assignment this week. Be sure to click the link if you, um, in this video. If you haven't gotten the book, you can get the book and join and you can invite others to join the love class. Share this video if this was a blessing to you. Someone needs to hear it. Um, and I want to thank my wonderful husband for joining us on this video. He'll be back too, cause actually he wrote the last chapter of the book, so you you have another video to come back on. Yeah. So okay, well thank you all for watching, and be sure to connect with me at rainyhoward.com. Be blessed.